Well, welcome to another installment of Coffee and Convos, where the only thing better than the coffee is the combo. That's right. And we have with us tonight Majors Tim and Laura Gittins from Brisbane Recovery Services, That's also awesome. known as Moonya. Moonya. <laughs> Munya. So our congregation knows it as Munya, right? And and uh, uh, so I'm understanding that um, that you folk also like to use the other title that comes along with it, right? Our official title is your official title. Services. Yeah. Where does where does the sorry? This wasn't part of the of our plan, but where does the name Munya come from? Do you know? Look, originally, I'm not sure how it kind of came to be attached to Munya. Um, and uh, I've read a couple of different variations of the word, but um, we're pretty confident it's um, an, a local Indigenous word um, referring to um, either um, a safe place, basically, wow. the main yeah. kind of general meaning around it. There's a few other... Um, things that I've read around what Munya may mean, but um, yeah, interesting. I believe it's an Indigenous word. How, how it came to be attached to us, I'm not sure. I think, um, you know, it was kind of called Munya for a long time and, um, you know, at some stage, um, the Salvation Army at, at a general level probably needed some official titling and so um, mm. that's when they kind of moved to Brisbane yeah. Recovery Services. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, look, safe place. That that makes sense to me. Um, beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is actually quite beautiful. It is. Yeah. We're we're so glad, guys, that you could join us tonight. And so we want to start out by you telling us a little bit about yourselves and your family. So a little bit of an introduction, and maybe you know what your appointment officially is, and then we'll we'll get into the meat of our conversation together. Cool. cool. Well, I'm Laura and this is Tim and uh, we've been married for a little over 23 years and we've been Salvation Army officers for most of that time. We went to training college when we were, um, we'd only been married for 12 months. Yeah. Um, and we have four amazing kids. Uh, Josh is 19, Abby is 17, yes. <laughs> <laughs> is nearly 15 and Bethany is 13. If you had to think about their ages, <laughs> I'd have yeah, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> I'd be doing that, except I've only got three, yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been blessed as officers to only have um, been in four appointments. Mm. Three core appointments. Um, the first appointment was a beautiful place called Bathurst in West New South Wales for nine years. And that's actually the longest I've lived anywhere in my whole life. Um, and then uh, Canberra for two years and Bonnells Bay for seven years. And we've been assistant managers at um, Brisbane Recovery Services for two and a half years. So, mm, good. And along that journey, God has continued to bring people with, um, in recovery or with addiction issues as part of our journey, mm -hmm. um, part of our core journey, as part of um, our personal journey. And uh, so I guess God was even working back in Bathurst days, in our family store, in our church in the shop, which we used to do once a month, of um, helping us to develop a heart for people who uh, wanted something different in their lives that um, they weren't getting. So, yeah. Mm, beautiful. Nice. Beautiful. So, look, talk to us a little bit about Munya and its mission specifically. Yeah, so I mean, I guess it's it, in some ways it probably seems obvious that, um, you know, the primary role uh, of Munya is just to provide people an opportunity to engage in a journey of recovery from um, substance addiction. Um, or the official, the official kind of medical terms these days is substance use disorder. Um, but uh, we tend um, to, to use the more common vernacular around addiction and those sorts of things. But um, that language is kind of slowly changing. But um, yeah, providing people the opportunity to, to try and figure out the reasons behind some of their um, dependence, some of their behaviours, some of their um, uh, attachment to, to drugs, alcohol, gambling, whatever it might be. Um, and to try and um, understand where that comes from, find some opportunity for, for healing of heart, soul, mind, um, whatever it might be, um, and to kind of look to live a life um, without that dependence, without, without that need. Um, 
traditionally, you know, Salvation Army services um, are, around Queensland, New South Wales, particularly have um, over the years had a really strong emphasis on. Um, um, oh, the word has just completely left my mind. Uh, abstinence on on taking an abstinence approach to um, uh, responding to issues of of addiction and dependence, and um, that's that's still certainly, you know, the. I think the, the the best goal to aim for. I mean, we talk about harm minimisation, which is it's about um, you know doing all possible to um, you know reduce the possibility of harm to the individual, to the family, to the community at large. Um, so harm isn't just about what the individual might do to themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, and so it's it's a um, you know th there's a whole range of what harm minimisation looks like. And I think the very furthest end of that, um, you know, is certainly, um, you know, a healthy life, living abstinence is going to provide the greatest or should, in, you know, would, you would expect to provide the greatest level of minimisation of harm for, for the individual, um, the loved ones and the community at large. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the, one of the greatest, um, one of the greatest things that, that God is continuing to teach all of us is the fact that actions and reactions often come from a deeper place within us. And mm. so, so dealing with, dealing with the whole, like I hear you talking about the whole person, right? That yeah, yeah. Dealing, it's not necessarily the addiction, but it's the dealing with the, the whole person and the way, um, the way that we were put together and we were made and how God has created us to be. Yeah, and a part, of, a part of the program is not only the rehabilitation from addiction, but also there's, the, there's this spiritual journey element too, right, that you guys help facilitate. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's really something that kind of undergirds all of those other things, hey? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, I mean, I guess, you know, we are the Salvation Army. We come from a Christian um, foundation we don't shy away with away from that and we provide a number of opportunities for people to um, consider try out experiment engage with christian faith um, you know we uh laura and i run some bible studies pardon me a couple of our caseworkers run alpha periodically mm -hmm. um, we have chapel services we um, love to support and encourage um, our participants to engage with with local Salvation Army churches. Obviously, Carindale is one of those. Mm -hmm. um, in the non-COVID world, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. So <laughs> certainly, uh, that's uh, a key aspect of of what we offer. Um, we um, do a fair bit of work with the Twelve Steps, which is um, you know has has a fairly significant spiritual component to to it. Um, in uh, yeah, so that's kind of a part of what we offer, um, and yeah, we just we we do. It's sometimes I think it's it's kind of a bit of a delicate balancing act between being true to who we are um, and encouraging people to to try that to give that a go mm. without actually sh shoving stuff down people's throat and yeah, yeah. you know people's own backgrounds and experiences does influence how they receive that and for some people it feels a little bit more like shoving it down your throat and for others it's it's a little bit gentler so uh, yeah. it's a delicate balancing act um, and to allow people uh, you know we we operate in the health industry under the health banner and um, you know ethically in that context we we need to also um, you know adhere to professional ethics as well and allowing people to express and explore their own spirituality, even if that looks different to what we prefer. Um, and we don't have a lot of, you know, we're, we're not butting heads with people about that. That That's not um, been a significant issue for us, but it is part of our, our ethics in how we operate is we need to allow people to explore their own spirituality, whatever that looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Laura, uh, things must look different there during COVID. <laughs> Yes, because, because I, it's a residential place, well, right? And, and, so yeah, that's that's the thing. Right. people are living in close quarters and and with each other all the time. So yeah, yeah like that's got to look so different right now, hey? Uh huh. So our <laughs> dining room has, um, you know, is socially distant. Every um, seat in the dining room is two meters apart from the, the wow. next seat. Um, so we can only seat half the number of people at a time, and that's and so Munya has dropped its numbers. We we 
we were probably around the 80 mark when um, uh, COVID-19 hit. And we've been probably more like the 40 mark for the last few, last month or two. But we're starting to get back up there again now. So um, back up to 50. Yeah. Yeah, so lots of socially distant stuff. Um, our chapel is like set up with chairs, two metres by two metres. Yeah. It's really weird. But at the same time, people are uh, embracing it. So there's lots more room for dancing. So um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you got to look at the bright side. How good is that? It's, it's a silver lining. <laughs> um, and, you know, we're spending a lot of time saying, you know, make sure you stay back from this person, you know, keeping, you know, because there's lots of lining up in your, you know, a community of 40 people. So lining up for lunch, make sure you're, you're staying back behind the line and that kind of stuff. Um, our caseworkers have been working um, in two groups. Half have been working on site, half have been working from home. And they've all just come back on site this week. Um, so okay. two who will continue um, to remain as a contingency plan until level three restrictions um, come into place. So uh, our management team have also been working half on, half off. So we're at home this week and next week we'll be back on site. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's interesting because I think every, every uh, Salvation Army Centre or ministry unit or church has had to uh, react and respond differently. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and sometimes the practicality of what that looks like in a residential setting is, is qu quite significant. I can't even imagine yeah, starting yeah. to work through that. Yeah, yeah. more, more, more difficulties yeah. than, you know, than yeah. you would maybe really first think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well yeah. even some of the men's accommodation, for example, um, one of the floors can hold 13 men, but the common room can only hold three. Yeah, of right. course. Yeah, no, only three of them can watch TV at a time. Oh, right. One of right. them wants to make toast. One of them has to, you know, someone else wants to make toast. One of them has to leave the room so that they can come in to make toast. Yeah, right. you know, logistically, it's been interesting. Been interesting. Yeah, I bet it has. Bless you guys. That's a lot to work through. Yeah, yeah. it is a lot of detail. Uh, and and because of the history of a lot of our people, we've we've got a lot of people in the high risk categories as well. You know, they've got. Yeah. immunity for various reasons maybe haven't treated their bodies particularly well so um you know it's kind of um they're vulnerable be because it's residential it would be easy to want to have a bit more of a relaxed approach i mean everyone technically shares the same address um yeah. you know so it, it's tempting to be a bit more relaxed about it and then you kind of hold intention the fact that actually a lot of these people are quite high risk and, and they're their health risk levels are, you know, quite severe. Yeah, right. Mm. right. Yeah, well, bless you guys for leading through this time because I, I'm sure that you've had to think about things that you would have never well, and other people don't need to think about, really. Yes, that others don't, yes. Oh, yeah, goodness right. gracious. Yeah. And look, I, I, I imagine that uh, in your time there, you have uh, heard and experienced and been a part of many stories. Right. Yeah. Well, and we've heard some pretty amazing stories, <laughs> even just when we've come on the nights that you, yeah. you know, somebody has graduated That's or right. what have you. So, That's right. yeah. yeah. And I think, I think we, we have, uh, um, I'd like to ask you about, um, to share, but yeah. I think we have a little bit of video footage, uh, about somebody in particular that we we're going to throw to yeah. and just experience. So could you set that up for us and just I tell sure us a little bit, bait our, bait our, uh, our appetite for that. And then we'll go to the video. <laughs> Yeah, we have plenty of good stories to tell. And um, the recent Red Shield appeal that's still going was actually a great opportunity to collect some of those yeah. and to place them on the digital door knock site so that everybody could be encouraged. And for, I think one week there, I, would, I was sending out an email every day to our staff of, here's, here's the good news story for the day. Here's, here's some encouragement for you. Um, yeah. And uh, Danielle's story was, I think, one of the very first ones that I, one of the first that I um, collected or gathered. Um, Danielle is um, a young woman who really has faced some pretty hard things in her, ver in her short life. And uh, when she came to us, she was homeless and she, she had no hope in her eyes. She, um, I met her at um, GSA the, the Sunday night before she moved into the withdrawal unit the next day. And I, she just, she looked dead in her eyes, you know, just, there was no hope. And um, she completed program 
towards the end of last year. And um, she's now doing so amazingly. She, um, she has a little boy and uh, she is engaged to her partner and she has a, a home to call her own. And um, yeah, it was a partnership of a number of services mm. really yeah. that may, uh, that helped Danielle to get where she is today. Uh, it was God Sports Arena, it was Munya, it was um, North Brisbane as well. Uh, and it was just that, that whole, everybody working together mm. um, that helped her to be where she is. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, look, it's got to be it's got to be so rewarding to be able to be a part of someone else's journey and story. Hey, yeah, right. absolutely. Well, yeah, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna cut to that uh, at the moment that video and just give those of you who are watching a little bit of a window into Danielle's story. Hi, my name is Danielle, and I'm um, I'm making this video in support of the digital door knock for the Red Shield appeal in support of raising money for particularly Munya this year. So I've just been asked to share a little bit of my story and um, hopefully it gives you a little bit of an understanding of how much Munya helped me and changed my life and how much the Salvation Army changed my life and continue to love and support me and my family. So... Um, before Munya, I grew up in a family that was quite toxic and drugs and alcohol and addiction played a big part in my family system. So then at 15, I lost my sister to um, a drug overdose and I got kicked out of home when I was 15 and I was homeless at a very young age and I turned to drugs at a very young age and by about 17 I was using methamphetamines almost every day so um, years and years on um, plenty of criminal charges plenty of physically abusive relationships where I was put in hospital etc and and just plenty of damage I'd done to myself at the end of 2018 I felt like I'd hit rock bottom again and I went to God Sports Arena which is a Salvation Army run church in the city and Bill and Paul advised me to go back to Munya so I went to Munya, I detoxed in Munya, and then I stayed on for the long-term program. Munya not only gave me a safe place to get clean and stay clean, it um, taught me a lot about addiction. It taught me a lot about why I use drugs the way I use drugs for so long. It taught me an insane amount about myself. It helped me build a relationship with God a really a really a one that I love and adore and it helped me just learn a lot of other things that I am now using in my everyday life so um, it's a really beautiful place where I learned a lot about myself and um, became who I was meant to be again who God God made me to be and um, I'm still clean now so it's over 18 months on I also fell pregnant in my recovery and Munya supported me during that entire thing um, the Salvation Army provided me with a lot of baby things my son's entire room is fully furnished with almost brand new furniture from friends of friends of the Salvation Army. Um, life is really good for me now. I'm an adherent for God's Sports Arena at the Salvation Army. I have a loving, caring partner who is also clean and an adherent for the Salvation Army God's Sports Arena. And we have a beautiful son and I have a beautiful family and I also have a beautiful home which 
Munya helped me get through housing whilst I was in Munya. Also, some of the furniture in my house was donated or given to me by the Salvation Army. So, I can never really sum up how much Munya changed my life or how much it could change someone else's life. It helped me deal with trauma that I would not be able to deal with in the outside world in a safe place where I could stay clean. It just helped me heal a lot of parts of me. I did the Alpha course while I was in there. Um, I did family systems, which helped me learn a lot about my family of origin and also my family that I have today and how to do it differently and how to break those cycles so that so that um, my family doesn't become the toxic family that I grew up in. So today I have a beautiful son, I have a beautiful home. I am so grateful for God and I'm so grateful for the Salvation Army for everything they've done for me. So I have really committed myself to doing whatever I can to help the Red Shield every year for the rest of my life and I'm now engaged to my partner. We have a son and our son will always know how much the Salvation Army helped us and we will always stay as involved as possible with the churches of the Salvation Army that we are a part of. Welcome back. And, and, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to see uh, for ourselves and hear from a, from a, somebody who has gone through the journey mm -hmm. and who has been, um, who has been part of the Munya community and has grown uh, incredibly in their experience there. And so, I mean, part of what we want to talk about as well tonight is the Red Shield campaign that's been happening, oh gosh, the last through, month through, and a half. Yeah, through yeah, May. Yeah. 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 Yep. I yeah. want to say, and you know, for the Salvation Army, we have had to make a massive shift yeah. um, in moving to online fundraising. And, uh, you know, Munya is one of the programs that the Red Shield funds, uh, you know, go into and, and help help us help others in those experiences, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys would depend significantly on, on the amount of funds raised through Red Shield. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we, we certainly receive funding from the Salvation Army, which comes in by the Red Shield appeal. I actually don't know the dollars and cents of that. <clears throat> I guess that's why we have a business manager. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, certainly it's... Um, the Red Shield Appeal helps helps us, not just here at Moonia, I guess, but recovery services as a whole. Yeah, across Australia. Um, yeah. Four centres just in Queensland um, and then a number of other recovery centres spread out throughout uh, Australia doing similar work. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, certainly it, it really makes a big difference to be able to continue to provide those vital services uh, across the nation. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a uh, is there another example that you have of a, of a, just a, an uplifting or an encouraging story uh, that you could share with us? I just I I admit I just love hearing that. It's just so encouraging yeah. for my own. Yeah. My yeah own it's experience. not it's not a case of if it's a case of which one do we choose? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, of yeah. Course, of absolutely. Course, 100%. Yeah. Last week was an absolutely crazy week, mm. but it finished off on Friday. Um, our two of our caseworkers um, run Alpha fairly regularly. I think four times a year. And on Friday, they had their Holy Spirit Day. Um, and the participants were just raving about their experiences and um, their encounters. And one of the girls, who's very um, logical in how she approaches life, there's not a lot of emotion in how she um, processes things, she encountered Holy Spirit in a beautiful way. And um, it... Um, I think it freaked her out a bit, but it also encouraged her as well to um, to pursue more than just the logical, more than what she can taste, touch, see and smell, but to um, recognise that God's at work, um, what she could um, comprehend, I think. So that was a really beautiful story from, from Friday to finish off a crazy week was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So good. So good. Yeah, I mean... It... That it's it's important for us to remember, isn't it, that God is already at work in people's lives before yeah. we encounter them. 
you know, yes. so, yes. no matter what ministry you're, you're involved in and the people that you come in contact with, God has already been working in the lives of those people. And so we're just kind of another link in the chain of someone's mm. journey. And when we get an opportunity to be a part of the journey at the latter end, when people come to maybe a, a faith in Jesus, uh, that's just a fantastic thing. Such a, mm. such a celebration, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So do you, do you guys have any last minute or uh, some thoughts that you might be able to leave us with as we, as we kind of continue? I mean, the first thing we want to say is the link for the Red Shield campaign will be in the, yeah, in right. the description, yeah. wherever you are, whether you're yeah. watching on YouTube or yeah. Facebook. And we'll put, we'll put the Munya link there and we'll put our yep. Karen Osevo's link there. Yep. So uh, and, any, and any way you contribute is yep. a contribution to the Red Shield campaign overall. That's right. So that's, that's a great right. thing. That's awesome. That's, Thank you. And, and the Munya link there, there's, there's loads and loads of, well, not loads, of, but there's quite a few really great stories there. Nice. Yes. So, but even, if, even if it's not about Red Shield appeal, if people just yeah. want a, a bit more Danielle's story or some other stories, you know, there's videos, there's written stories. Um, so people can find out more there as well. There's some great little, little stories there. Yeah. So if you're faces. curious to hear more, right? Just, just yeah. on the Munya link and uh, yeah. you can hear more stories. How great is that? Yeah. yeah. There might, yeah. might even be one or two faces on there that might be familiar to people at Carindale. So ah, yes. Yeah, that's right. So good. Yeah. So yeah. good. So guys, look, uh, any last any last thoughts to share with us? Uh, yeah, as well, I, I feel like I've been doing a lot of talking, but um, <laughs> it's cool. um, but I have been thinking a lot about the word trust lately, um, about how in these crazy times and even coming out of COVID, like we're still in it, but we're coming out of it, things are changing. We still have to trust. We still mm. have to trust that um, the authorities know what's right for us we have to trust that god is still in control oh, amen um, i'm i'm being reminded of that verse a verse that i learned as a child proverbs 3 5 and 6 trust in the lord with all your heart don't depend on your own understanding seek his will in all you do and he will show you the path to take and uh, i think that if we trust in god that through it all keep our eyes on him and, and focus on him, we will end up in his place, in his time, at the right time, and uh, we will just find a real life that we never knew we could have. So that's mm -hmm. a word for the moment, to trust. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well, that's a good word. Yeah, that's, Thank a, you. that's a perfect word to just kind of leave with people. <laughs> so good. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, I don't know what to say other than I think that we're at the end of our coffee and combo. Yep, we should we should remind you again that the, the links for uh, giving to Red Shield will be in the description of this video. And also, if you haven't uh, followed us on Facebook or Instagram, anything like that, all the socials, um, look for us out there if you're interested in content like this. Um, and, and, and also to thank these two beautiful yeah. people uh, for being with us. Hey guys, if, if anybody's watching this and want to connect somehow with your community or support your community ongoing, that's maybe not necessarily uh, dollars where they've already done uh, the donation, but they want to somehow support you guys in, I, I don't know. Even is in there, a tangible yeah, way. Yeah, even in a tangible way or a physical way, or is there anything that, um, that, that we can do with that? Oh, uh, good, good question. That's um, a big question, I know. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I mean, it, there's there's all kinds of ways and, and I guess at the moment it's so different um, with the COVID-19 restrictions and um, and so, you know, do we talk about what it looks like now or what it might look like or what it used to look like? So it's kind of hard to answer, but certainly, I, I mean, people of faith, please pray for us. <laughs> um, you know, we, we do face daily battles um, and you know all of those battles have a spiritual basis and some of those battles come out in different ways you know not so spiritual but um, certainly uh, you know for the prayers out there we would love mm. just that ongoing support for prayer um, across all that we do and all that we offer and, and for each of our individuals um, you know there's I guess long term there's opportunities for um, uh, volunteerism in, in certain ways, um, if, if there's specific skills that people bring or specific needs that we have. Um, certainly, uh, when we're able to return to churches all gathering around the place and our participants start to be able to come back and engage with the community, um, you know, 
getting alongside them, supporting them, getting to know their names, mm. um, you know, building relationship. Um, I, yeah, I guess one of the things, well, I'm probably digressing a little bit, but one of the things we probably find with our participants going to, to churches is people are often not sure, <clears throat> not sure what they're allowed to do. Um, and, you know, I guess I would, I would say to that, that our participants have a fair idea what they're allowed to do and, and ultimately they're adult people. And so, you know, if, if a participant started coming along to Carindale and someone there's like, you know, well, I've really enjoyed getting to know this person. I'd love to take them out for lunch after church on a Sunday. Is that okay? Sure. Just invite them. They'll know whether that fits within the, the parameters of what they can and can't do. Yeah. Um, you may need to drop them home after if you're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but but yeah so i mean you know what what can people do well it's it's a bit of the old how long is a piece of string yeah. um and uh yeah certainly if people are wanting to reach out and and offer support by all means get in touch with us um you know tim.gittins g-i-t-t-i-n-s at salvationarmy.org.au or laura.gittins at salvationarmy.org.au um, or obviously you guys can put them in touch with us and, um, you know, reach out, send us a message and, and we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's so good. So good. Yeah. 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 Look, what I hear you saying there is, is just the building of relationship, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah. It's and crucial. And outside of, outside of the church service and outside of Munya and, you know, like the program, it's that building of relationship between two people. That's yep. really important, no matter where you come from and no matter what your experience is. For okay. sure. We knew that before, like we knew that before COVID, <laughs> but I just think that that has just been highlighted yeah. that relationship really, if we can get our relationships right and yeah. solidified and like, like God is just going to continue to do amazing things. And so, and so we, uh, we want to say that, you know, for the participants that, that come and attend our church or wherever they go that the building of relationships is just an incredible opportunity to help solidify, um, you know, their success even, even. Mm, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Look, I think a good so thing good. to do now would be to pray. Yes, you know, I agree. Would, Chrissy, would you like to pray? I would us? love to pray for my friends. And then we'll uh, say goodbye together. All right. Let's oh. pray together. Awesome. God, we want to thank you for this incredible opportunity that we have uh, just to, to talk about ministry mm. and mission. And so tonight, uh, you know, you have situated the Salvation Army in such a way that we're, we're able to do mission um, that really is the heartbeat of the, the Father, the Heavenly Father. And so, mm. Lord, uh, I pray for my friends, Tim and Laura, and ask that as they lead um, this beautiful community at Munya, that you would just bless them with, with wisdom and mm. knowledge, especially during this COVID time. Um, as decisions are being made, even just to lift some of those restrictions, Lord, that you would just give them uh, wisdom and knowledge. And Lord, I pray for the participants that are there within the center. I pray that you would just continue to pour out your love and um, that, that they would recognize the Heavenly Father that you are um, and, uh, and how much you love them and how much you just want to see them uh, succeed in life, Lord. And so I just pray that you would just pour out your love and your blessings in a wonderful way. And Lord, I, I pray for Karen Del Salvos as we partner mm. with Munia yeah. in different ways. I pray that your spirit would just help us in recognizing the importance of relationship. Mm. And that we would just be able to come alongside not just uh, the ministry of Munya, but also uh, individually with the participants that come and are part of our community, Lord. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that you would just give us uh, opportunities to, to connect and uh, to help, help them along their journey as much as they help us along our mm -hmm. journey. Because we are all yeah. in this together, God. And so we believe that you are a God that beckons us to your throne of grace. And so we just want to meet you there, Lord. Um, so thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for the slice of heaven as we talk in conversation together. Thank you for technology and for yeah. the fact that it's working for us today, Lord. <laughs> and we would just ask that you would just go with us uh, wherever we are and whatever you have intended for us this week. Just bless us today, we pray. In your son's name, amen. 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 Thanks, guys. Should, we, should we admit the fact that this is... Plan D. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> and see? So we, yeah, take three. So we taped this once last week and it didn't quite work. And then we started the taping today and we thought, oh, this might not work. Yeah, but we look, had some connection issues, but we've, technology we've got has come through for us and the Lord has come through for us. So it's wonderful. Yeah, it is. Look, so guys, thank yeah, thank you guys for your time. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Idea tonight. And we look forward to further partnership together in ministry. We do. Yeah, it's great. Be great. Thank and, you. And big shout out to uh, to the guys from Carondale who in a normal world come and join us for chapel really regularly. Yeah. Um, you know, just to see those friendly faces come in is just beautiful. So uh, bye to you guys. And um, we look forward to doing it again sometime soon. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah, great. It'll be a good celebration. It will. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Good to catch up. Bye. Bye. Bye.